Heat TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Hey, I'm Beth Baker and I work at McKinleyville Middle School in McKinleyville. And I am Jody Domingo. I work, also work at McKinleyville Middle School in McKinleyville. I teach seventh grade science there. And today we're going to work on science and Thursday we're going to work on a math project. So as usual we have science and math. And what are we going to learn today Ms. Domingo? So today in honor of the Halloween season we're going to use candy to do some candy chromatography. Ooh, so is it candy science? It's candy science, which Ooh. is always popular in seventh grade. Oh yeah, and in seventh grade, by the way, seventh graders, if you're out there listening, floor candy is not okay at school. So if candy falls on the floor, we don't eat it. Yeah, and one of the reasons I'll probably never do this in my classroom, so sorry, is because it would be an all-day battle on my part to get people to not eat the candy. Yes, yeah, because seventh graders really are still in the floor candy phase. Yes. Yeah. yes, don't eat, and sometimes I have to tell them really gross stories about things that I see on shoes and in the hallway so they don't eat it off the floor. Yes, all right, well, okay, enough of floor candy. We'll leave that for later. <laughs> Easily all right. distracted. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Mike if you're watching. Uh, the window repair has held up well. Now we've had a couple of storms and Ooh, did it you is have a window situation? not leaking. Yes, and Mike, who's like, I think our number one fan, oh. was the one who repaired it. So we're going to do some chromatography. Co chromatography is a technique that's used to separate the components of a mixture using a solvent. I threw the math in there for Miss Baker. I don't know if we'll have time to get all the way to the math. Okay. Um, and I just noticed a typo, which is totally okay. But the smaller pigments and the pigments that are more soluble in the solvent will move smaller, will move further, I'm sorry, up the paper. And I love to try to do experiments with things that you can easily find at home or you can buy at the grocery store. So we're going to use coffee filters for filter paper. You can definitely buy scientific filter paper, but these are obviously really easy to come by. And as a science teacher, it's really nice to do grocery store science because y you have to buy groceries at like seven in the morning before school starts. And <laughs> <laughs> you can't necessarily order things. Oh, I'll move out of the way so you can see the materials list. Here so we go. here's our materials list. I'm gonna have you cutting chromatography paper strips. Okay. We have a variety of beakers and measuring cups to mix our solvents, but also run, put our solvent in and run our solution. We have food coloring because we're gonna compare that to the candy coloring. We have a variety of candies so you can pick. I have some pro tips on which <laughs> ones work well. Okay. Um, scissors, rulers, bamboo skewers to use little mini clothespins to hold our, our um, filter paper, petri dishes to get our dye, salt, and water. So our solvent is just a salt water solution. Okay. So really so easy to So there are lots make. of things. And by the way, is this PowerPoint linked if this is posted? Do we know? I think that this PowerPoint is available to you all uh, after this gets posted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, um, uh, so you'll have access to all this information after the show. Or on YouTube, yeah. you could watch it over and over and over and over Heck again. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Miss Baker, your first okay. step is yes. to choose the colors that you'd like to test. And if you think about primary colors, mm -hmm. those are not the most interesting. So red, yellow, and blue oh, are not so the most interesting because they're it. not mixed with other colors. Okay. And are we going to mix, like should I pick green, green, green? Are we going to do multiple candies? It is entirely up to you. Oh. We'll compare it to food coloring. Okay. So we can see what, how, how food coloring behaves versus just pure food coloring versus how our candy dyes behave. So orange is a combination of red and yellow. That might be interesting. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. And we have, we have Skittles, Tic Tacs, and mini M&Ms. 
and mini M&Ms. And okay. we're going to do some extraction. Uh, Math-wise, a mini M&M has a higher ratio of surface area to volume, which means there's more coloring on the outside. So that's a good that's a good idea. Well, and I thought the mini M&Ms, the ones that we don't use in our experiment, we mm -hmm. could make put in chocolate chip cookies. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to dump some out while I think about it. So and I'm whatever use this. we use, we're going to label our strips with what it is using okay. pencil. I think I want to start with the mini M&Ms. Could we start with orange mini M&Ms? Yes, and okay. I like how you're putting them on coffee filters so that we get, they're safe to eat. Yes, or these are safe to eat. Some people and in the studio. And these are not safe to eat because we're about to t touch them a lot. We're, we're only going to use a, like one. Okay. Oh, we're only or, using one? Well, oh, within okay. reason, you can use more than one. Okay. But we only have so much time and so much equipment. Okay. Got it. So I'd like to start with orange M&Ms if that's okay. okay. All so right. So your very first step uh -huh. is choose the colors of candies that you want. Okay. I bought Petri dishes, but went plastic ones because everything in seventh grade is plastic. Mm -hmm. It's a clumsy situation in a seventh <laughs> grade classroom. Yes. So when I did this at home, however, you probably don't have Petri dishes sitting around. The thing that worked really, really well was to use the lids of plastic containers. Oh, sure. So here's what you're going to do. I can tell you're very excited about the candy because you already have that in your I hand. I am. I already picked out three <laughs> orange M&Ms. So I'm we're going to have to extract the dye from our candy first. Okay. And for that, we're just going to use water. You're going to use a pipette, and okay. which is an eyedropper, basically. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have one of these at home, you could use the, your bamboo skewer to just get a little drip of water and drop it onto your, oh, okay. your tray. Okay. So you're going to put one drop of water, and then you're going to put your candy in the water. And we want to do that set up for as many candies as you want to run. Okay, as many different colors? As many different colors as many different candies. We're not mixing candies in the same dish. Oh, I get it. Okay. And we can do more than one color right now. Absolutely. Okay. So, so this is going to be the orange one. All the stuff that you would like to, all the okay. candy that you'd like I to. I have three see. drops of water. Is that too much? Um... You know, you well, here's why that might be too much. Okay. You don't want to dilute the dye too much in the water. Oh, We right. want a really concentrated dose of the dye. Okay. So the less water you have, the better. Okay. But you can use one of the other pipettes to, to suck the water out. Yep, to pull the water out. Yes. And then Oh, you got it all. Wow. Okay, here we go. I've had some practice. No kidding. Wow. That was the best do-over ever. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that much? Yep. And okay. then you put your one candy right on top of that one drop. Okay. And one then we're going to repeat that procedure for one every drop. candy that you want to test. Okay. And you are welcome to use your hand because none of that is dangerous. Okay. Got it. Okay, we're going to go again. Um, by the way, you said you had some pro tips. Should I uh, branch out from the M&Ms and use something? Is there something else that bleeds ink or <coughs> bleeds color better? Well, I like to think about pigments and dyes and how they mix. Uh -huh. So, I would recommend the brown M&M because if you mix all the colors of paint mm. together, uh -huh. you get like a grayish brown. Oh, yeah. So, the brown M&M might be interesting. Okay, so he's in there. He's sitting. So, these are M&Ms sitting on a little drop of water. And to extract the dye. From the, the candy dye. coating. Oh, yeah. I'm all processed right now, which is I'm making drips, and I'm putting candy on the drips. And then um, Ms. Hamango keeps reminding us why we're doing this. I'm all about process right now. Okay. Perfect. And then maybe while you're doing that, I'm going to repeat with the food coloring. Okay. So we and have what about this Skittle that's that weird brown color? Is that a good bet? That that would be a great bet. I think okay. that's supposed to be purple. <laughs> Sorry, it, Skittles. They've always been a little disappointing. The purple Skittles not very purpley. It's, it's not. sort of brown. And I'm sure yes. there's a very logical explanation for why that is. When I was a kid, I thought great things that were purple colored. I thought the color was grapeple. Interesting. Yeah, I thought things were grapeple colored. That's like the celebrity yeah. part. I call it celebrity lab partner name. You blend two names together, and that's your celebrity lab partner name. Oh, I get it. So the lab partners in my class end up with celebrity lab partner names. I love it. 
they don't always love it, but I think it's hilarious and that's important. Yeah, you're <laughs> supposed to have fun at work too. <laughs> of course, that's yeah. what I tell them and some of them appreciate that. So we're gonna cut our strips out of this coffee filter. So I got a white one so it would really show our colors. Okay. And we're aiming for two and a half by seven and a half centimeter strips. Oh, we're gonna measure. You're gonna measure. Okay. And I brought you a ruler. Oh, exciting. Two and a half by seven and a half, huh? And how really many of them do we want? One for each? One for each, okay. for sure. And then if you wanna run the food coloring, we need one for each type of food coloring. Okay that we are gonna run. Okay. So kind of our goal is to compare the candy chromatography to the food coloring chromatography and see if we can determine what food dyes were used in the candies. Okay. I'm gonna score that so I can hold Okay, it. and you have these here if you want okay. them. Okay, got it. I didn't know if I could put pencil marks on it if that would mess up the whatever happens to it next. That's a really good observation and good thought. We are going to label, so we would write orange m and at the top, and we're going to do an origin line as well. Okay. And you definitely want to use pencil versus pen or marker, because if you think about it, pen or marker might bleed. would run, and yes. we don't want to, at this time anyway, do chromatography on the ink. Uh. We want to just do chromatography on the pencil. Okay, so Although that's about at school seven we've done chromatography on ink before, yes. which is fun. When it's I taught funny, forensics, I had a student bring a big packet of work in today that he wanted to turn into another teacher, but his whole packet had been left out in the rain; it was drenched. And he had done all of his work in blue ballpark mm -hmm. ballpoint pen, and it was all perfect. Wow! So it's in my office, all dried out and ready to go. Okay, I have two parallel lines that are seven and a half centimeters apart, so I want to cut that. Okay, start and then chopping. see how many two point fives I can get. That's a, that's a very wise decision. Although I think I could have just folded it in the middle. I think I overcomplicated it. Okay, so we're gonna make strips of filter paper. And we're making as many strips as tests. Okay. So one strip per test. So one strip per? Per candy and per... Okay, I'm gonna fake my right angle here. There-ish. Not too bad. Yep. And it's, you know, it's not a critical. Oh, it will work if I didn't get a perfect right angle? It'll work if you okay. don't get a perfect right angle. I'm going to use the ruler and mark two and a half C's. And then I'm labeling these, is that right? Yep. Oh, am I labeling like purple Skittle? Purple Skittle. Got it. Brown M&M. &M, because at some point, the color may be less obvious than at the start. Okay. And I always think, oh, I'll remember. <laughs> and maybe when I was younger, I would have. Right. But now my brain is so full with important facts. Okay, so this is green. Skittle. So there's the green Skittle. Then we have orange. Oh, we have, we're going to run this different strips. So oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to cut them, right? Yes. Okay, so here's the green Skittle strip. Okay, lovely. And that one's going to go. Do I have a green Skittle? Yes, I do. I got a little worried there for a minute. <laughs> that one's going to go there, like that. And then this one. Sure. <laughs> if you want. Am I over-organizing things? It wouldn't be the first yeah, time. Yeah, I, I realized I'm kind of a messy magician Okay. in the kitchen go. and when I'm doing science. And then I just do a thorough cleanup job afterwards. Okay, yeah. Okay, so do I label the strips? We can label them. And then do, I'm still thinking about not having the color go through the writing. So I'm thinking that's the business end of the strip. That is the business end. And just in the interest of time, we, I don't think we have to worry about that. Okay. Because it takes a while for the solvent, in this case is going to be water and salt water, so salt and water. Uh -huh. It takes a while for the solvent to travel to the top. Okay, so do, are, do we need to get a wiggle on? Are we in a hurry? We might be in a little bit of a hurry. Okay. Okay, so I have orange M&M, &M, brown M&M, &M, green Skittle. Now what do we do? I'm and do purple, purple Skittle. So we can get, we've got our <laughs> strips, we've labeled them. You're gonna draw a pencil line on each of your 
strips uh -huh. about a centimeter from the bottom. And that's going to be our origin line. So we're going to aim to put our die right on that origin line. Okay. On like each that. time. So we can, partly what we're trying to measure is how far did each different color travel up the strip. Okay, good. So I'm putting it at, at one centimeter sticking out and then I'm going straight across. So Perfect. that's pretty close. And then we're going to start drop and die. Okay. We're going to drop and die. Okay. Sounds like a safety thing. It does. It, except it'd be like drop and then don't die. Yeah, that's true. Insta and this time okay. we're D-Y-E, not yes. D-I-E. Yeah. Spelling can save lives, man. Okay. For sure. There we go. Okay. Okay. Are There's you ready to put thing. your die on there? Yes, I am. So you're going to use the pipette again. And a you might want to use, I would use a fresh one because we don't want to dilute it with okay. any water. Yeah. And you're going to, you can move the candy with your hand. It's safe to touch, of course. Okay. And you're going to, oh, so it leaves behind. Oh, it's a beautiful purple it, color, too. It looks much more and purple look, you when can it's see, on the candy. It's like an eyeball. You can see where it took the, die off too so we made like an eyeball a scary eyeball and i okay. noticed that some of the white whatever that second layer is in, uh -huh. in under the candy is in the okay so now i'm going to suck up the purple water and you're going to put a drop right on the origin line okay oh wow we got a lot and don't be shy with the dye okay y if if you get a lot and that's can it okay. just sit on the table is that okay that is absolutely okay, okay. here we go purple skittle big old drop Perfect. And then we're just going to let that dry. Okay. And then you're going to repeat for okay. each of and the... it's already crawling all over the paper. That's okay. Okay. Oh, and okay. So then you're this gonna is so fun. It's pretty fun. Okay. There we so go. If you and have, now we have like milky brown. we got another eyeball. If you have Halloween candy, you can try this because you'll have in a few short weeks an abundance of candy at your home. I know. I hope there's trick-or-treating this year. I missed it terribly last year. Last I year we did not do trick-or-treating. I never get trick or treaters. So the brown dye less impressive on the paper, but yes, not so beautiful. Okay, orange. Here we go. Ugh, we made another eyeball. And the orange. So the <gasps> orange. Oh no! Disaster. You know what? Let's try it. Okay. It, we. It's. We, let's try it. Okay. We'll just scoot. So we accidentally got some excess water in yes, the dye. Yes, I did. So our dye is a little diluted. That one might not be very... Is it very diluted? <laughs> it's diluted. <gasps> that one may be less impressive in the end. Yeah, because we oh. had a technical error. Right. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, well, so we'll just let that So one thing that I did at home was I just flipped it over the candy. Oh, yeah. And then I and just... And let it go again. And let it go again. Oh, that's good. And then we have the green Skittle. And we have an extra strip, too, so we might do yep. that in a minute. We can do a do-over. Oh, I like do-overs. I need them all the time. Okay. Green uh, Skittles. Here's a clean one. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, it made a beautiful, clear emerald green liquid. That's so pretty. Here we go. So career-wise, if somebody was interested in science and uh -huh. they were interested in food, yeah, there are jobs where you could work being a chemist in the food industry for things like this. Oh, so you can be a food chemist. Okay, so now while we're letting those kind of dry, they might yeah. not dry entirely in uh -huh. the time that we have. Would you let, should we run some food coloring? Yeah, so are we going to do, let's see, oh, and this is the rest of the procedure on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we have that for, I think we're up to step number 17 right now. I think we've done everything it says on here. Okay. All right, and then we can do a couple of the food coloring dyes. Oh, yeah. Because we'll co compare. And maybe I can do that. And uh -huh. um, the next thing you could work on, if you would like, is uh -huh. the solvent. Oh, okay. And the solvent is what's going to dissolve. So, Wait, you're so gonna is the water not a solvent? Because I see that dye dissolved or food coloring dye dissolved into the water. Is that not a solvent? It is in that okay. case. Okay. So, the solvent that we're going to use for the chromatography, you could uh -huh. mix that up. Okay. And we're going to do a one a tenth of a percent dye or salt water solution. Okay. So you need 500 milliliters of water. Yeah. And let okay. me find the right size beaker. I just grabbed a whole bunch. Okay. And then you can put about, and this we're not 
the measuring isn't that important. I uh -huh. have this brand new giant thing of salt, which is probably like 20 years old, because I don't think I bought this. So I think it was okay. in my classroom. And there's a little dust on top. There's a little dust. Yeah, okay. But Vintage salt. Put it, so I've got water for you. Uh -huh. There's the salt. Okay. Here's some water. Okay, and you want there's 500 a teaspoon. milliliters? Read the 500. Oh yeah, I can actually see it better from this side. So I'm going to pour all the way here to where it says 500. So I'm going to pour in 500, and this is just 500 milliliters of water, right to there. Okay. Here's and the then you're going to mix some salt into there, and you A quarter want teaspoon, it to you said? dissolve. Correct. Okay. Because we're not being super careful mixers. Okay. Got it. <laughs> And then I'll do, I'm going to pour it right over here. Oh, that's a good thing I did. Okay, I did not <laughs> fill any of the it, equipment with salt, by the way. It's not super moist <laughs> okay. like we're used to. Oh, that's <laughs> true around here. The salt's <laughs> always humid. You have to shake it to make it come out. <laughs> so that and is. And then can I stir it? Yes. Okay. Whoa. Stirring. Okay, and the food coloring comes out like gangbusters. Oh, wow. <laughs> Heck yeah. I may do that one again, do a do-over. And we might revisit the tradition here at Homework Hotline mm -hmm. that the science teacher always does all of the cleanup. Sure. <laughs> That's true, right? Um, <laughs> sure. Okay, we might have to read the bylaws for that. All right. Uh, let's see. The salt is mostly like it kind of hurricaned away, and now I don't see any salt. Maybe a tiny bit. I made like a little. It's swirling around in the middle. There All might right. be a little, a few grains of salt floating around in there. And we're going to get our, so you want about under a centimeter of solvent in each beaker. Okay. And we're going to hang our paper uh -huh. from bamboo skewers on the top. And then I brought mini clothespins. Oh, yeah. So about like that. Mm, yeah, let's test it. We might need to go a little, let's see, I'm just going to do an informal, maybe a little more. Okay. Because so it has to reach down there, huh? You want the test strip to be dipped in to the solvent, but not past your origin line. Okay. So you want it to touch the solvent, and you want the solvent to travel up. You don't want to soak. Could we hang them first and pour the water second, the solvent second, so that we can just fill up back to you that line? You could, but you don't want to pour the solvent down. Okay. Onto the paper. Oh, right. So you'd have to right. remove the paper. Okay. And let's see, I think we're officially in a little bit of a hurry, so we're yep. just going to go. Uh, yay, baby clothespins. They're so, you And know, you baby, probably don't cute. have baby clothespins at home, in which case you could use paper clips or binder clips. Or maybe even a little piece of tape. Or a piece of tape, or even just fold it over the edge. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Yeah. There we go, and put it in, like that. And I think I'm gonna need considerably more water. Right, so I underestimated your... Okay. Our pour. Let's see, that to that. Yeah. And we're just gonna get it going. And then do you want a little bit more, or is that okay? Nope, that's perfect. Okay, yay. Okay, and so now the solvent is crawling up the filter paper. Yep. Okay. And then start loading up our other beakers so okay. we can get these running. Got it. I'll just kind of copy that first one-ish. That should be good. Okay, here we go. And, and you, up. I should also add. <laughs> it's wrinkly. You don't want, I might have wrapped it a little too much. You oh, don't yeah. want it to touch the sides of your beaker. So you okay. want it, and you, if you ran more than one strip in one beaker, uh -huh. you wouldn't want them touching each other. Oh, okay, got it. For some reason, in this speaker, that doesn't work. Interesting. I think that paper is really wrinkly, and it's using up some of the vertical. Can I just pour more water in there so Absolutely. it can reach? Absolutely. Here you go, buddy. There. We'll get him going. Here we are. There. Now he's happy. Outstanding. Okay. And did we get all of them going? Well, we have our messy orange disaster okay, one. Okay, let's get So that, that didn't work. And let's run our green dye, our green food coloring. Oh, okay, got I it. I didn't label it, but you could put solvent in there while I label it. Okay, and I think we're going to need a bunch of solvent because it's pretty tall. And I'm just going to put FC for food coloring. Okay, good. And this is, we might have to just use all of this. That's okay. okay. We could even use that beaker and that yeah. would be okay. economical in time. Yeah. And actually, I've also seen this done where somebody just dipped 
the candy in liquid and set it in the middle of a coffee filter and just let it kind of do its thing. Oh, wow. So uh -huh. that's another, if you don't want to go through all these steps, yeah. that's another thing to try. Do so we have another container that we can try? We have more water, but oh, okay. we'll have to add a little bit of salt because that's okay. just pure yes. water. And a little less than a scoop. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Kind of quick. And I'll put it in. And since this does take a little bit of time uh -huh. to so travel. So uh, we might also do just a little bit of a description of what we're expecting. Yeah. Huh? In fact, I have some here. Oh, look at that. So you have some that are already done. They're not, I didn't handle them carefully. <laughs> <laughs> they, I just sort of, so I'll see if I can find some good ones okay. for us. There we so go. what you're going to see is kind of a almost like a oh, watercolor. Oh, you can see the food color one go right away. Yes. Wow. And food okay. coloring, as you know, is super concentrated. Yes, very saturated in color. Very. And so right now you can completely see that the color is just climbing all the way up that strip. And you can see a little bit of blue. Okay, so see how the dye is actually in the liquid and some of the dye is traveling in the solvent? Yeah. You want to sort of minimize this if you're trying this at home. Okay, got it. So you just want to dip it in a little uh -huh. bit. You want all the liquid to go up and the dye to go up with the right. solvent. And what I'm seeing here is that we have a cloud of blue and yellow, in right. the, which is green. So, so it just separated them out. Correct. That's amazing. And then was this our purple Skittle? Uh, um, no. Uh, yes, that's the purple Skittle. So what you would ultimately do uh -huh. uh, if you were running this at home yeah. is... Did we do the brown M&M? Uh, yeah, right here. Oh, awesome. We just didn't do the orange M&M because we sp I spilled water all over. Yeah, it, this is a little it. bit messy on the table, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. So if you were doing this at home, you would look to see, for example, in the brown M&M, what dyes did they use to make that brown color on the candy coating? And so you would know what they combined. Right. Yeah. Very and cool. And you should get kind of a watercolor rainbow effect of uh -huh. the other colors that are in the dye that right. they use. And today I think the most uh, impressive and obvious one, can I pick this up or will it mess it up? You can pick it up. Yeah. Is this one, you can totally see that green turned into yellow and then, so that one is pretty darn amazing. Um, if I had something white to put behind it, maybe like this, we could really get a good look at it. And you can see that that green dye split apart into blue and then yellow. So it's green on the bottom and then blue on top, and then it's got yellow in the very center. And we put so a that one, absolutely. We dipped it a little too far into the liquid, because again, in an ideal situation, you would have a little bit of liquid under your spot of dye. Uh-huh. So the oh. dye only goes up. It doesn't go into your solvent at all. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh my goodness, well this was really fun and with all pretty much household items, huh? Right. Oh my gosh, and then of course you can always, um, uh, eat the leftover pieces if you uh, need to, like, you know, clean up. I, I think right. is what we call that, yeah. I think we're going to have some help from people in the yes. studio. And uh, we will see you on Thursday. Bye. Thank you for watching.